All right, g'day Ivory psychologists. Did you know girls are more stressed than boys? Now, some of you girls are probably thinking, of course I knew that, Mr. Dixon. That's obvious, everyone knows that. And the boys, well, you might even agree as well. Now, in this video, we're going to look at uh, the prevalence rates of stress. Now, this is for IB psychology, the health psychology option, but you might just find it interesting anyway to figure out why are girls more stressed than boys. But we're also going to get a little bit more in depth than just that because well like everything is complicated so in the next video i make after this we'll also look at well uh, hang on some studies show that boys have higher stress levels than girls so which one is it anyway by the end of this lesson hopefully you understand the how girls are stressed more than boys so that's looking at the statistics and the studies that show girls have higher levels of stress and also some reasons why always remember in ib psychology what how why but is a really good structure in terms of learning, revising, and writing exams. All right, so one study, one simple fact that shows girls have higher levels of stress than boys. So we're not just, you know, making anecdotal observations and saying, well, girls look more stressed than boys. This actually comes from the data. So using the perceived stress scale, this is a questionnaire where you can get a total marks out of 40. Seen at our study showed that girls had higher stress levels than boys, 16.3 versus 12.6. Now that's still relatively low stress that once you get above 16, I guess into the 20s, now you're looking at quite high levels of stress. So still quite moderate levels, but girls are more stressed than boys on the perceived stress scale. All right. Um, and in Osberg study, we're going to look at a, st a study by Osberg uh, out of Sweden in this lesson. Uh, it shows it's well known that girls report higher levels of perceived stress and stress-related health problems than boys. So this isn't just based out of one study. This is a very consistent finding in the research that girls report higher levels of stress than boys. All right, so that's the statistics. Now, just a reminder, if you, you, you might just be stumbling across this on YouTube. This all comes out of our stress for IB health psychology. It's all in the ebook and the materials are there. Okay, so we're, we're talking about prevalence rates for health psychology here. We've covered the, the other explanations already. Okay, so in this lesson, we're looking at girls in stress and then we'll look at boys in stress. And we'll uh, the after that, we'll look at academic stress. IB students, are you more stressed than AP and other students? We'll find out in that video. All right, so <clears throat> negative thinking and the BPS model means the biopsychosocial model. So this is just a bit of recap. We're hardwired to see negatives, so it's harder to see positives. We, may, we have to make a conscious effort to see the positive sides of things. Okay, um, I'm not sure why my slides are in here at the moment. Why, what these, the, I took these slides out of the lesson. Okay. So here are some other statistics on prevalence rates. So one of the things you need to know is, okay, what is a prevalence rate? It's the proportion of a population that has a given problem or characteristic at any one time. Okay, so that's a, um, right, there's, there's a, a, the definition there. Okay, so how common is a particular thing? And we talk about prevalence rates often in psychology with mental health problems, rates of depression, or, um, uh, sorry, yeah, so psychological disorders or even mental health problems. Now, it's tricky with stress because stress isn't diagnosed per se. Okay, so we're really gonna, this is a, a tricky one with this particular health problem to discuss and explain. And I'll give you some exam tips on that in a second. So um, a lifetime prevalence rate, you might see this word. This means the percentage of a population that has the disorder at least once in their lifetime. So the lifetime prevalence rate of depression is higher than the prevalence rate. Prevalence rate means who has it right now, Lifetime means who's going to be diagnosed with depression at least once in their lifetime. So, of course, the lifetime prevalence is higher. There we are. So, 7.1% of Americans are diagnosed with depression at least once in their life. Now, here are some other interesting statistics. This is more to do with anxiety and depression, not particularly linked to stress. But it is showing, when we talk about... Uh, one way to talk about prevalence rates is you can compare groups of people. And so here we're looking at boys and girls, but you can also look at the changes over time. Now I looked really hard to find differences in the prevalence rates of stress over time. And I couldn't, which suggests that it hasn't been studied or that we don't have the data or that there is no increase or change in rates of stress over time. And I'd actually, it's probably going to be the latter. I think people might have more anxiety, depression, more rates of mental health. Do they have more mental health problems or are they just diagnosed more? That's another discussion. But anyway, 
we can see here that uh, children, the rates of anxiety and depression in young children and adolescents is on the rise from 5.4% in 2003 to 8.4%. Ever having been diagnosed with anxiety, we can see that's increasing as well. Interestingly, between 2007 and 2012, not much of a change, right? 0.2% uh, ever having been diagnosed with depression. So this is just a, a bit of an indication to show, okay, anxiety, depression, these things are on the rise. And so we look at there's been a massive spike in teenage depression. Now this is, again, just giving you some context here about how to talk about prevalence rates. And plus this stuff's pretty interesting and relevant and really important, right? Uh, I'm going to make another unit on uh, depression and, and understanding why we have this sudden spike in depression. Maybe you can figure out some hypotheses if you've got some thoughts. Why do you think we've had this massive spike in anxiety and depression starting around 2010? Okay, um, leave a note in the comments. All right, but let's have a look. Prevalence rates and stress. So we don't have a rate of stress because you can't have a universally, there's no diagnosis of stress. Okay, so what we're going to look at and the, the terminology, how you phrase this is a little bit tricky. Um, the prevalence of higher reported stress levels in studies. Okay, so there's, um, it's, yeah, it's a little bit, the, the terminology here is a bit tricky. Um, I wanna turn off my, where am I? I wanna turn off me, there we go, okay. An exam question might ask you about prevalence rates of a health problem. It's easy to talk about the prevalence rates of stress, but difficult to talk about, no, sorry, the prevalence of stress, but difficult to talk about rates since there's no diagnosis. Okay, now my, my best tip here is, show that you understand that explain that in the essay look i can't talk about prevalence rates of stress because we don't have a rate we can't get the percentage because you don't get a stress diagnosis so instead you're going to talk about different levels of stress different levels of reported stress in your essay um that that's what how i would approach that in the exams okay all right now that being said let's look at the study okay so osberg et al they conducted their study on 14 to 15 year old swedish teenagers and we'll have a look at the original study in a second so we can see the graph and some of the interesting data so they did semi-structured interviews and they had questionnaires and also they measured cortisol levels remember cortisol is a stress hormone that's released when you're feeling stressed what they find well in the questionnaires that was the perceived stress scale girls had higher levels of stress than boys Right, and sorry, actually on all three. So in the interviews, in the cortisol, and in the uh, questionnaires. They felt under more pressure, cortisol levels are higher, they're more stressed about school, more worried about their grades in the future. Okay, so this gives a, a quantitative analysis of high levels of stress in the questionnaire with the perceived stress scale and levels of cortisol, and also qualitative evidence to, su to suggest uh, how and why girls are more stressed than boys. All right, so, um, now, why are girls more stressed than boys? Well, here's a, a possibility. Um, well, actually, sorry, we got, just to go back, we got some reasons here, right? Here are a couple of reasons why girls might have high levels of stress. They're more stressed about schoolwork, okay? So they worry about them more, and they're more worried about their, their grades and the future, which is probably why they're more worried about school. They get high levels of stress from school. Okay, other explanations. Subjective social status, where you compare yourself to others on the social hierarchy is linked with stress. People with lower so, uh, subjective social status will tend to have higher levels of stress. Now, girls tend to, right, or at least, sorry, I shouldn't say tend to, in one study, right, I did find in one study they rated their subjective social status as lower than boys. They tend to have, um, in this one study, I shouldn't say tend to, that's me oversimplifying. Okay, I want to make that really clear. I, I, there's not a consistent trend of this in the research. All right. Um, some studies have shown girls have a more reactive limbic system, right? So their amygdala is more prone to react, it uh, activates uh, higher than boys when, um, when you know, in an fMRI and you show provoking images. All right. So if you have a higher, more reactive amygdala, that could make mean you are more prone to stress, right? Because you, you're going to have that higher level of physio physiological reaction to stresses. This, I think, is possibly one of the strongest explanations as well, is that girls are more likely to have an external locus of control. That means that they are more likely to think that their health and well-being and stress levels are uh, a product of factors beyond their control. And this, in boys and girls, if you have an external locus of control, you're more likely to feel stressed. And it's important to remember that this is on a, a continuum, it's on a scale, right? 100% your stress and health and well-being is outside your control, 100% it's in your control, and then people vary along that spectrum, right? Right, can I, can I control it, can I not control it? Okay, so again, 
on average, girls tend to have more of an external locus of control. In terms of coping strategies, right, problem-based fo- uh, approach coping, so trying to cope with the stressor by dealing with it, solving the problem, going towards it, approaching it, is linked with lower levels of stress. Boys tend to do this more than girls, right? The other approaching strategy is um, emotion coping, right? Focusing on the emotions uh, or even avoidance coping. So trying to reduce stress by avoiding and not dealing with the stressor. This is linked with worse mental health outcomes, higher levels of stress. Girls tend to do this more often. Now, again, it's really important here that, you know, uh, we are talking about the averages, right? And it's often only a small difference. You can see in the, in the questionnaire earlier, it was uh, 16 out of 40 versus 12 out of 40. And we're going to have a look at the graph here in a moment that shows, actually, let's have a look at the graph right now, that shows the differences are there, but it's it's not massive. And you might be thinking, well, yeah, not every girl is the same. Absolutely. And that's the same goes for every study. That we, we, we all we can do in psychology from the research is talk about the averages. Okay, so here's the graph that shows, right? This is their cortisol levels. And so um, I forget the, the value, how they measure it. Here we go. Uh, uh, my science isn't good enough to know um, what that is. My apologies. But anyway, we can see it's pretty close. So the, the morning cortisol levels are the sign of chronic stress. Okay, so if you have higher levels of cortisol in the morning, um, you might have higher levels of chronic stress. But generally, our cortisol level is higher in the morning. Okay, so um, we awake. So this is the the girls, right? Have higher, and then it peaks. Their peak volume of cortisol is higher. The stress hormone, and then it decreases. It gets a little bit similar. Now, if we look at the qualitative, the interviews down here. Okay, these are actual quotes from the interviews. The guys are more relaxed, whereas the girls they like they work like all evening and all night before a test. Right, that's one of the boys. I guess we have a cooler attitude. We can take it easy and be relaxed when looking at things. Well, all the girls are really stressed and make a test into a really big thing, which is so unnecessary since it's well just a test. Okay, now this also provides a bit of an interesting insight into the difference between quantitative and qualitative research methods, right? We can have the graph, but you go, well, okay, but that's just an average. Then we can have these direct quotes from the students. We go, yeah, but that's just one kid's opinion. So, you know, having this, uh, having a a range of data uh, can be really helpful in this case. All right, now if you are studying along in class with this video, if you are watching this as part of the unit, then now is your time to try to remember what you've just heard and write it in the workbook. In terms of exam tips, my best tips would be, remember that definition of prevalence, one sentence, put that in your essay, give the statistics, right, the more specific the better, so you're gonna say, right, prevalence rates of stress, you might explain why we can't explain rates of stress in, in, um, because there's no diagnosis, Right, so we can't get a specific, do you have it or not, right? We just have varying levels. State the statistics that show girls have higher levels of reported stress than boys, and then explain why, okay? And use those studies. Uh, Osberg et al. is a good study, and Cena et al. study will support that, okay? Um, oh, no, okay. All right, yeah, so now, in the next lesson I'm going to make, and I'm going to explain, we'll learn about boys and stress. Now, actually, girls have higher levels of reported stress in those questionnaires, but when it comes to measuring acute physiological responses, we're going to see what happens in the next lesson. All right, okay, so just a reminder, um, all these materials are available on the store. Look at the links in the description, and I'll put the link to the original study in the description as well. If you've got any questions about this, please leave a comment. Um, and yeah, thanks. I hope that was helpful.